heavier ball as we've just had some good rain, so he doesn't want to bite it off. He instead goes to Silvani! Low ball to McLuggage. Breaks the arc, fires a goal. Umpire hardly had to move. He's back in that direction again. Five lost the footy, but he'll wait down from the goal line. He'll finish it up this time. Hello, I'm Damien Barrett. Welcome to Access All Areas, and we are here thanks to Crypto.com. Matthew Lloyd, too, is also here, as always. And Lordo, are you now very worried about what's happening with the Melbourne Premiership defence? I am, Damo. I think if the last three weeks were around 2021 20, and 22, I'd say they can't win this Premiership. So that's how concerned I am about their midfield and forward connection, which we'll hear Simon Goodwin talk about shortly. But they've got time on their side. That's the only positive. But they are really struggling in terms of the way they're playing. And they just can't score at the moment. No, and that was the problem yeah. again yesterday yeah. against Collingwood on the Queen's birthday uh, match of 2022. They just weren't able to mm. get enough avenue toward goal. We'll hear from Simon Goodwin soon, but the way Collingwood was able to withstand its own inaccuracy early and just hold its own game together and then surge in the second half, Lord. This was as impressive a performance I think as we've seen all season from any club. Yeah, Melbourne were just hanging on for a fair period. It was nine goals to three after half time. Collingwood's pressure, yeah, that they, they bring the same intensity week in and week out. And uh, yeah, I think, I think it's the way Melbourne are losing. You know, started games really well three weeks, the last three weeks that they've lost, but they just can't sustain it. And then Jamie Elliott kicked this one. The damn wall had well and truly broken by that point. And Collingwood, yeah, they're just uh, a really honest side who play mm. a great brand of footy. There's something compelling about what they're putting mm. together under Craig McRae, yeah. isn't there? And it's, it's, it's made up of so many parts that are equally crucial. And one of those is the, the steeliness and I think just the aggression that Brody Majcek mm. plays his footy with. He's an old school, old fashioned, no frills type of player. But I would imagine, Lordo, in, in Craig McRae's thinking, he's as important as anyone. They, they got him as a defender just in the rookie draft to, to help uh, with their defence at that time. He was playing for Port Melbourne in the VFL and now uh, he's just such a hard worker. He plays above his height. Yes, the, I think they're one key forward short uh, from mm. being... You've uh, always said that. I've always said that. But he gets the job done most weeks. Top side next year. But uh, yeah, he does. Gets the job done. Yeah. Hard matchup with the work rate that he plays with. You go to the 2018 preliminary final. You go to the 2020 elimination final. You go to Queen's birthday yeah. 2022. We'll mm. talk about Mason Cox yeah. dominating massive Collingwood matches. He's maligned, but he's had some very special moments in his career. Yeah, I gave him three votes. So I voted on the Neil Danaher trophy yesterday, yep. and uh, I gave him three votes. I thought he was average in the first half, but from the moment he jumped into Gorn, hurt Gorn, then got picked up the ball, kicked the goal from about 40 out. I think yep. that got Collingwood going. And then after that point, he had 21 disposals, the most a career high. And they were across the ground. Yeah, I mean, he was everywhere. taking intercept marks mm. down back. It, it's a role that Craig McRae was yeah. keen for him to play, wasn't it? The, the big man role that he's near mm. seven foot or about seven foot height yeah. would uh, would have him playing, but 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 wasn't. He was more used as a as a smaller style yeah. of player in the Collingwood structure. Oh, yeah. He, he was absolutely everywhere. We can see here. And this is the issue for Melbourne. The way they are blazing the ball inside forward 50. Goodwin spoke about this last week. This is the issues they had before they won their premiership. They just lack connection. They blast the ball in. I think this is on Simon Goodwin, Damo. I think mm. that they are just doing the same thing week after week after week. And it worked for them when Tom McDonald was down there flying for marks and they could bring it to ground. I think it's, it's taken Spargo out of it. It's taken Neil Bullen out of it. It's taken uh, and Pickett because there's nowhere to crumb because it's just right. been blasted into opposition players. And when you say it's on him, what is it you're specifically referring to in I terms think, of them breaking down? I think to lower their eyes and, and go in a different way, a different method. Uh, just blasting it to 20 metres out and hoping that they could lock the ball in. That's not working anymore. No, it's not. And uh, they're not working off field. We'll touch on that in a moment. But after the game, Simon Goodwin uh, did allude to this club at the current state is, is breaking down. The boys play with heart. Um, but when your method starts to break down, um, then over time that can, that can weigh heavily on a, on, on a team and we're no different to any team. If you're not in sync and you haven't got connection right across the board for the whole time, um, teams will wear you down and that's what happened today. You know, Collingwood are in really good form, their method's really strong at the moment and they bet us in the key areas of the game and um, you know, we both generate the same number of mid turnovers but they were able to connect a bit better. So it was their third loss in a row, Lord, and the numbers out of those three now as a collective are, are genuinely worrying for a club that had no peer for 17 matches late last season, early this season. Yeah, so 12th in the AFL for clearances, so they, they haven't got that dominance through the midfield anymore. Uh, 
Six in the AFL for inside 50, but 17th for scores. So that's their issue. I'm with Simon Goodwin. I'd be more worried if they weren't putting in a great effort. I thought they tried their backside off yesterday. Right. They've been there at the MCG, but it is that lack of connection that they've got within the team. They'll get May back. Yeah. I mean, they suspended him for the altercation mm. uh, off-field with Jake Melksham. Mm. Does that fix them immediately? Uh, well, it doesn't fix their forward line and their inside 50 entry, so that's still going to be the issue. And, and Max Gorn needs a break. He's, he was banged up from the first bounce yesterday and then copped a few more hits from there. So, yeah, they play Brisbane at the yeah. MCG, so another big game coming up for them. Well, our, our brave play of the week, thanks to Crypto.com, came from also the Queen's birthday match. It came before the Queen's birthday match. Um, MND, Neil Danaher's uh, amazing cause. That There's no better day. That This is Terry Danaher, the brother of Neil, dressed up as Crocodile Dundee, Justin Langer as, as Rocky. We're about to see Ash Barty in a Lion King outfit. But no day on the AFL calendar is done better than this one. Oh, it's so fantastic. And uh, the, the Danaher family do it so well. And it just gets bigger and bigger every year. The effort that the stars put in for Neil and m and And Neil uh, was probably... The, the, the rates say you'll be taken within two years. And Neil Danaher's going eight years on. Mm. So he's just a, uh, just a f phenomenal person. And uh, I was with him Friday night too at the Essendon celebration. He was as proud as punch to be yeah. out there as well. And, and an a amazing family crowd near the 80,000 yeah. was there early for the yeah. for the ceremony around it and it just gets better yeah. every single year. Jason Horn Francis uh, Lotto, there, there's a, a major problem here now with, with his attitude, his uh, inability to cope with what's going on and you, you say that and you then factor in that he's yet to turn 19 mm. years of age. This is a, a, um, a break in play, Todd Goldstein really wanting to say a lot more than he does. After the resumption of play he does this to, to Kelly of the, uh, the Giants and, and he's now been suspended by the matriarchy office for two weeks. This is actually the circuit breaker that's required for him. Now, the decision was made by the match review office, not North Melbourne, but something had to give with what's been going on there this year. He's lucky he didn't get four weeks. He could have so easily have broken the cheekbone of Josh Kelly. So he's fortunate he gets a couple of weeks. So, and you watch him at the huddle here at three-quarter time. He's the first one to walk off. He's not even listening there to, mm. to David Noble. So I, I, want to, I went back to my first 10 or 11 games and I was floating on air floating, just that uh, every kick I enjoyed, every handball, you're just buzzing to be around senior players, yet this guy's playing with the weight of the world in his shoulders. He's just got to chill out a little bit, try and enjoy himself. Can you a chill bit out more? when the team is going so badly uh, as well? Because it's part of this story. Yeah. I mean, he's come into a team that's as historically low as it's ever been, yeah. and in, in the context of the AFL, the modern AFL, as bad as any team's yeah, ever been. Yeah, I know, been. but then, so he, he's a kid, yet he's carrying on like, uh, you know, hmm. you know, like he's a player who's played 200 games and seen the, the highs of it. Now, why, Jack Zeeble, Imagine Zeeble carried himself like that, or you know, why it's, he's been very petulant. I think he's, show, he's frustrated, petulant, and I, I used the Sam Walsh example last night on another program where, you know, Walsh lost uh, won one of his first eleven games. Mm. But you never yet, saw that. Did you, you don't see that. He's the yeah. opposite. He, he's just buying in, and he's trying to drive training standards. Well, I'd love to know where Jason's training standards are at, and whether he's in the top five or ten trainers at North Melbourne. So they've got to buy now, and then he misses now two mm. weeks from this match review office adjudication mm. on that. Do you extend that if you're North uh, Melbourne to even make it longer to make a point? I, I think they've treated him with kid gloves. I'd go to, I'd be David Noble, and I'd say you've got two weeks to show me on your training standards whether, you I, whether I pick you. Come back in. Um, so you're on notice. Yeah. Mark McVeigh, your, your great mate, Lordo, um, alongside James Hurd and also Dean Solomon, has now had three matches in charge of the GWS Giants. Now, it needs to be said, two of those matches are against West Coast and North Melbourne, a good game against Brisbane Lions, which they lost. But they're the numbers that, that, are, that are being produced under this new regime. Yeah, I think what they were doing in the, under Leon Cameron, they were concerned about their defence. So they were moving the ball slowly to protect their defence, whereas Mark's come in, thrown Himmelberg behind the ball, Canilio into the midfield, Peatling forward. All those moves have worked. And the players are thriving. What players don't want to be robots? In any team you play, they don't want to be told... X's and O's, you have to be here, you have to be there, we have to move the ball slow. It's a lot of Essendon are doing at the moment. And just play, let's play yeah. with a holding here. Harry Himmelberg, who's yeah. been a forward his entire career for the Giants and is now doing some really nice stuff yeah. down back. I've always said this would be a great job to have, and this is Peatling, who he's moved forward. He's kicked three goals three weeks in a row since he's come in. Players want to play, Damo. They're all being recruited because they're talented. Yeah. Mark's allowing this talent to come through with an aggressive game style, which has been brilliant to see. Yeah. How are the Bulldogs going to go, Lordo, without Bailey Smith, who, who I would argue is their leading best yeah. and fairest of this year. You may have a different view on that. He, he's out for, for um, headbutt reasons on Zach Tui uh, last week. There's a two-match ban there. The AFL Integrity Department now will be interviewing him this week for the, the emergence of the, um, the drug use over the weekend on social media. 
likely to miss four games of, of footy. They're crucial games. GWS, Hawthorne, Brisbane Lions and Sydney. Now, at this stage, it's only the first of those two games he's missing officially, but we do expect there to be a ban for the, um, for the drug use. Yeah, and they've got a tough month coming up. GWS, Hawthorne, Brisbane and Sydney. And again, uh, Bailey, he's handled himself really well since, but he's hurt his team. We've seen what Stephen May has done and the absence of Stephen May. And Melbourne would have won one of the three games had Stephen May play. Mm. They lose three without him. And Bailey Smith has cost his club badly. Even the headbutt, it was just so out of character, so poor. Yep. He looked an angry man out there with what he did and then obviously it comes off uh, that Nanny's got this suspension as well so he's hurt his team badly. Damo, the President's meeting uh, is on today. Uh, yeah. What's the number one topic you think they'll be discussing? Uh, it's, it's the Tassie licence yeah. and, and as I read it, Lord, it's, it's on a knife's edge as to what happens from here. It's August is the date that the AFL Commission will submit to the clubs whether it comes in or not and the clubs will have the say on it then but in the lead up to that August timeline inclusive of today's big meeting with all presidents of all clubs in, in town for the Hall of Fame gathering, um, there's going to be a lot of discussions around it, Lord. There's a, a lot of pushback now. The, the meetings that are happening before this official meeting today are pretty significant in recent days and, and weeks. And there's reluctance now from some clubs of, of a very strong nature to, to not have a 19th licence even, which would obviously bring North Melbourne back yeah. into that conversation as the as the team potentially to go to Tassie. And then the numbers attached to the deal are just not there with both the stadium and the, um, and the commitment financially per year from the government, which is yet to get bipartisan support on it in Tassie. It's a, they're a long way off the numbers. So how many president votes do they need to come in, Tassie? It'll be depending on how they present the proposal. If it's presented in a certain way, they, 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 they've always said from the outset, Lord, it needs to be effectively unanimous, whether it's all 18, but at least a, an overriding number for the AFL Commission to do it. And they're a long way from that right yeah, now. But, the the yeah. conversation will be quite heated today, I believe. So as we sit here now, you think it's more unlikely for Tassie than likely? At very best, yeah. line ball, um, for, for a number of reasons. And I think developments out of today's mm. conversations will, will shed some more light on where that mm. looks. Yeah. They know the Fremantle Dockers, what a season they're having and they won't, may well be Premiership favourites with what they're doing. And uh, Nathan Fife returned and I liked his game. They know he was six kicks, 16 handballs, but just his presence around the stoppages was brilliant. It was enough. Yeah. It was, it was yeah. more than enough, wasn't it? Yeah. It was more than enough. And, and, and uh, I think he's always had a sense of theatre, Lord. He knew the sense of theatre in this game was yeah. to just play a role, mm. not, not be the, the two-time Brownlow medal winning superstar that he is and, and will be at some stage again, I think, of this season, the way he impacts on what lies ahead for him. He's only going to get better. And uh, Andrew Brayshaw, what a season he's having. I was fortunate enough to coach Andrew as a junior. And... He's as honest as they come. You know what you get week in and week out. He's been so consistent, but now he's added a bit more flair to his game. It's just the honesty. Yeah. It's tight in the game. It's They're only up by 10 or 12 points at this point in time. And then to get some cream at the end with this goal was, was fantastic. That's probably the next step for him, Damon, kicking a few more goals. But yep. other than that, he's got everything to his game. Well, he manufactures one yeah. here out of nowhere, doesn't he? And, and it was a crucial goal to kick at that stage of the um, of the Dockers game against Hawthorne. Lord, he, he's been prominent all season on the coaches award voting. And, and the man above him is a man who uh, he was once a teammate of and, and was very nearly again a teammate of this year back at the the Dockers, um, they're putting together some sorts of seasons, those yeah. two players. Clayton Oliver will go to number one, I think, once the votes come through from yesterday's game. But Andrew Brayshaw, some say, would have 24 votes in the Brownlow medal yeah. so far, so he'll be right in the mix. We talked about a great ceremony at the MCG yesterday. There was a fantastic one that you are involved in on Friday night, Lordo, the Essendon 150th birthday celebrations. You love being back out there, and, and so too did your many adoring and loving Bombers fans. Uh, it was so good to be part of. Uh, you know, I, I said walking out on the MCG and being there with teammates and, and players who you know, went before me at Essendon. Who, this is a great moment, Yeah, James this too. was a great moment. Just, just we loved it. Every single person who was a part of it. And then to be in this huddle and the passion that Dyson Apple, who's doing it tough as a captain, spoke with it, had all of us. All of us who were ex-players wanted to play again on Friday night, Dana. What did Sheed say pre-game without giving up the confidences of that uh, sanctity of that yeah. moment? Yeah, he took us into the coach's room uh, where for one last address. And he, you know, there was the Danahers, the Longs, the Watsons, the Fletchers, the Herds, and he just spoke about uh, the 150 years and, and the part that we'd been uh, it, the journey we'd been with him and just how special it was and yeah, it was a yeah. real thrill. Couldn't get the job done when it no. mattered in the game itself. Uh, Carlton did a did a number on them again. It's not for the first time this year. Now that sets up a, a big Thursday night game, Carlton versus Richmond. It could well be a Dustin Martin less Richmond. He's currently ill. Damien Hardwick spoke last night saying he's in doubt. It's meaning Carlton is going to get another presentable win. Yeah, Adam Chera out, so they may cancel each other yeah. out. Dustin Martin and Adam Chera with his hamstring. But the key forwards of Carlton, Kerno and Mackay, I think that's going to prove, you know, 
potentially put Carlton in as favourites, I think, because uh, Gibkiss is a young man finding his way in the game. He's, he's looking good, but I don't think he can handle Mackay or Akerno. Uh, and then you've got Robbie Tarrant, who's just going at the moment. So yeah. um, both teams in good form. It should be a beauty on Thursday night. How many people do you reckon? Have you I was just actually yeah. wondering that as you were talking mm. about it. I can't see why it wouldn't get into the 70s mm. again, which would, which the game's needed, hasn't it? We've had a couple yeah. of crowds of that nature, the, Col- the Essendon Carlton game, yeah. and again yesterday at the MCG. So he's hoping uh, that is the case. And for all the news in the lead up to that game and all others in round 14, stay with AFL.com today. You stay with the AFL live app. We'll be back next week with another edition of Access All Areas.